this is our last session at looking at uh, I am that I am. Yesterday we spent time looking at knowledge and understanding and it is extremely important that we recognize what we tried to bring out yesterday before we go into today's session. If you guys look at the drawing that we selected for I am that I am, you would see the hands with the clay and that is a potter busy on the turntable uh, making a pot. And today I want to go into that illustration of the potter and the pot. The potter and the clay and us being the clay and the potter being God. And uh, there are a lot of stories in scripture that God actually refers to that. But we're only going to look at two. We're going to look at Isaiah 29 and then we're going to go into Romans and Romans then refers back to Isaiah um, 29 as to the context of what Isaiah was trying to say. And so I want to highlight certain things about this coming back to understanding. Before we read what I'm going to read, before we go into the potter and the pot, before we go into the potter and the clay, as being the clay, and in reference to the scripture, it says Israel is the clay. So Israel's the clay. And what God is building with his hands is with Israel. Okay, so that's, that's the big context of the potter with the clay. And as we spend a lot of time on everyone who believes like Father Abraham is he who is called Israel. Okay, so we are the nation Israel as church, as Christians. Anyway, I'm not going to spend time on that. What we're going to do is I want to look at um, a physical hindrance. To Christianity and I want to word this as good as I can okay so listen to what I'm saying I'm gonna speak flesh and spirit in the fleshly things that God are busy with in our lives becomes difficult emotionally to the flesh if we want to understand what God is busy with in the flesh if we want to understand certain things, like for instance, God said to us, move down to George. And if we wanted to understand and, and do what? Why move to George? We are close to Johannesburg, where most of our meetings were. We flew out of Johannesburg to around the world. What? Why? Why move to George? If we wanted to physically understand, we would have missed what God wanted to do in and through us. And here yes. we sit in today teaching and equipping church because God knew exactly. Mm -hmm. So because we trusted God, now we trusted and that was spirit. So we did not have to understand the how of the flesh. We have to understand who God is. And so that is the mm -hmm. understanding and the knowledge that we spoke about yesterday and specifically what Rudy referred to. So mm -hmm. if you want to go back to yesterday's teaching and look at the scriptures mm -hmm. of understanding and knowledge, that's what we want to base today on. Every single time that we teach on this now, we want to make sure that we as church understand God, gain knowledge of God, understand God. Stop trying to understand what he's busy with. Then it will feel like trouble, which will mean be joyous. Because whenever it comes, let it be an opportunity for joy. For when your faith is tested and your faith is going to be tested in whether you understand who God is or not. And so human fleshly understanding hinders us in moving forward because it, it keeps us back from obedience. It keeps us back from from trust and it keeps our faith back and therefore God will still form that faith and shape that character until it comes to a position of physically trusting him so understanding and knowledge is a spiritual context to understand who God is now I'm going to move into these scriptures and we're going to read Isaiah first Isaiah 29 verse 16 I'm only going to take verse 16 and then go into Romans 9 okay so you turn things upside down as if the potter were thought to be like the clay. So what is formed, say to the one who formed it, you did not make me. Can the pot say to the potter, you know nothing. Okay, so this is a, 
this is a it's one of those that uh, it almost seems like um, a moment of conflict that um, Isaiah is, is highlighting but I want to highlight that what is being said about the pot and the potter here is that you want to try and understand in a fleshly context and you won't you won't understand what God is busy with because you are the pot you are the clay Trust the potter. Know the potter. And so don't compare. It's comparison that comes into the church that walks out into bickering. That walks out into disunity. Which God hates. Because he died for a united church. And church, that's what we're after. What we want to see is uh, children of God, brothers and sisters in Christ, being united in Christ. And us understanding that he made us different. We have different callings, different giftings, different temperaments. And the way that it fits together is woven together by the Holy Spirit in one body, which is His bride. And therefore, a functional body living out the Amen. functions that Christ wants to in the streets of the places that we are in. So, I'm going to go into Romans 9, verse 19 to 21 and hear this. One of you will say to me, then why does God still blame us? For who is able to resist his will? Now this context was all about God made this person for that and that person for this. And it was about the, the, the issue was trying to understand whether God's will overpowers man's will. Okay, and it, it was a really silly conversation that was being had. It was a philosophical Greek discussion. And so he came in and he, and he overpowered that philosophical thinking of human thinking with us. One of you will say to me, then why does God still blame us for who is able to resist his will? But who are you, a human being, to talk back to God? Shall what is formed say to the one who formed it, why did you make me like this? Now here's the context and it comes from Isaiah 29, 16, 45, 9 and 45, 21. Okay context does not the potter have the right to make out of the same lump of clay some pottery for special purposes and some for common use see here's the thing when we compare ourselves to one another we are the ones that go why must i do this why must i be a servant why can he do that why well, it's always in the fleshly that satan gets us to to become disunited because we compare our roles and our giftings to others. Mm -hmm. Does not the potter have the right to make out of the same lump of clay some pottery for special purposes and some for common use? Mm -hmm. Is it not God who made us for His glory? Church, mm -hmm. is it not God who made us for His glory? Are we not to live for His glory? See, Satan will always try and trick us to bring glory on ourselves because we want to be grand and more special than we should when we only function as God calls us to because we understand Him and we don't try and understand in the flesh. We trust Him and we obey Him perfectly and it walks out to a life of blessing. And we live only for the audience of one. And that is God. Amen. That is our focus. And when we live that way, we will always be fulfilled. You know, it's it's that true understanding of who God is and what His plan is all about. You know, one day I want to um, hear these words from Father God. Well done, good and faithful servant. Mm. Um, I've given you something. I've prepared a destiny and a purpose for you and you've multiplied it and you've been faithful with it because I asked you you've been obedient and then these words well done good and faithful servant and that is all I want to hear one day from our father God Amen. now yesterday we we touched on Hebrews eleven six, and it's and it says it's impossible to please God without faith and then he says you need to believe that He is and that He is the rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Now, I want to touch on six quick things um, that we gain um, when we truly see God. 
And these are practical things, and I'm going to relate that back to Scripture. So the first thing is, when we draw near to God, the Bible says, He will draw near to us. We see that in James 4, us, uh, 4 8, and it says, draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. And it's something that we need to pursue. Um, the second thing is, is, He will guide us into all truth. We see that in John 16, 13. Now, it's so important to understand that when Jesus spoke these words, He was referring to the Holy Spirit. So, in the Holy Spirit, um, He will guide us to all truth. Um, I like this statement. It says, when you're in tune with God, you get to follow Him to a very special place, known and accessible to only to His followers. And it's the place called truth. Amen. And God is the guarder of truth. His will and His way is the only truth. Mm -hmm. The third thing that, that we gain is we, He will show us things to come. It's also from John 16, 13. And it is also through the empowerment and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Um, the, the fourth thing that we see is He will make you perfectly strong. And I like this scripture in Nehemiah um, 8 verse 10. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Mm -hmm. In Philippians 4 4 it says, um, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. And it is out of our joy in our God, our mm -hmm. delight in God, mm -hmm. that we find our strength. Amen. The fifth thing is, He will give you everything you need. And that is true dependency. And understanding kingdom. In Matthew 6.33 it says, But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. In other words, if our focus is His will and His way and His righteousness, He will give us the rest. Again, it's understanding our God, His will and His way and His heart towards us. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, He will anoint you um, in your natural abilities. We've got natural abilities, but it's got limitations. But then God comes in and He anoints us. He strengthens us. Um, in Luke 4, 18, it says, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me. Now, Jesus Christ spoke this word, mm -hmm. these words as a man. And when Jesus went up to heaven, He said, The same Spirit that I had, I will now give to mm -hmm. you. So we can say those same words. Mm. The Spirit of the Lord is on me and now we are anointed mm. through the Spirit. God is not looking for your ability. He's looking for your availability. Mm. And that is through seeking. And that is through putting your agenda down, submitting your will to God and wholeheartedly pursuing Him, obeying Him. Mm -hmm. May you go through these points and the scriptures mm. And really dig deep in your hearts to say, am I trying to understand what God is busy with in the flesh before I obey? Or do I truly trust God? For He is that He is. And He says to you, I am Echi. I will be. Amen. So thank you so much for joining us for this series. And we're looking forward to next week where we're going to look at Kingdom. Love you guys. Love you guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I'm just sitting here. I got time, it's clear to see From up here, the world seems small We can sit together, it's so beautiful